Have I been track laying or procrastinating? Keep watching this layout update to find out. Hi everyone, I'm Martin. Welcome back to Donington Castle Model Railway. This episode is a layout update and I'm going to give you a tour right uh, around the layout so you can see the progress that I've been making. Now, uh, I've, I've done some work uh, in some areas, um, some of which you may have seen um, in the previous videos, uh, but a few extra little bits and pieces that I will get you up to date with today. I've had a few new ideas about some parts of the layout, so it'd be great to get your thoughts on them. So let's get straight over there and take a look. I'm going to give you a detailed uh, tour of each area of the layout. But let's start by giving you a very quick overview of how things look at the moment. Um, obviously, our heritage line down the front um, and our main lines up elevated. Um, so if I just pan you around, you can see, um, hopefully see where some of the work has been taking place from last time. Um, obviously, I'm, I'm kind of balancing doing this, uh, making this uh, layout with other commitments. Um, so progress has not been as as kind of rapid as I would have liked, uh, but unfortunately that's just the reality of life. Um, and hopefully uh, as I kind of go through things, you'll see that um, there has been some good progress made. Um, I think particularly for me, I, I need to make sure that I stop and just kind of take stock of what I've achieved um, because the way I think it's very easy to kind of look at empty baseboards and go, oh my goodness, there's still so much to do. And you kind of then sometimes forget about the things you have achieved. And we're going to start over here on the southern main lines. I've not done a huge amount of work here, but there were a few bits and pieces since the last update. Uh, you'll spot that I've, um, I'm, I'm a little bit happier now with the color of the, uh, the what's effectively a chalk uh, cliff face there. Um, I've added a few bits of um, ivy. Um, I'll link up to the video on how I make that uh, in the top right hand corner if you're interested in seeing that. And just use a few kind of bushes and things uh, to try and add a bit of um, kind of detail there as to how kind of vegetation grows on those things. I'm not totally happy. I think I still need to add a little bit more there, um, but I think that's a good starting point. Um, you'll also notice that I've added in, it's not stuck down yet, but uh, we've got um, an AWS uh, ramp down there. Um, now, I wasn't aware until some of the comments on the last video uh, that on the southern region, these were green. Um, because uh, they are a much stronger electromagnet uh, because they have to deal with the current from the, the third rail interfering with them. So uh, they're painted green. Um, I had no idea of this. Uh, so thank you to those people who left comments about that. Um, after those comments, I went away and did a bit of reading up um, on that. Um, and so that ABS ramp is now um, in green. It still needs a little bit of weathering. Um, also need a cable running off there because uh, my understanding is that the kind of the, the, the electromagnet part uh, effectively as it's an electromagnet, it has an electric current flowing to it in order to energize it uh, when needed. Uh, so we need a, a thin wire running from that uh, down into the cable trunking. Um, you'll also notice that I still haven't got a signal in here. Um, I'm hoping to get that uh, put in place um, fairly soon. Um, I am going to be talking to some signalers from the real railway uh, about the, the ideas I've got for signaling. Um, so hopefully they'll be able to kind of give me a little bit of confidence about what I've got planned, um, but hopefully that will appear on the next update. Um, otherwise, uh, still more kind of bushes and, and kind of scenery needed in these areas. Um, another thing that I've been thinking about is obviously this uh, back scene here is very close, and so we don't get very much um, by the way of line side detail um, over here. I'm thinking that uh, once I've been able to empty this garage a little bit more, that I might um, extend out that board ever so slightly uh, and push the back scene back, maybe from kind of up here somewhere, uh, just to give me a little bit more room to add a little bit more of a kind of a feature there. Because um, at the moment, otherwise, I'm going to be painting on the back scene right here. I don't think it's going to look great. So um, I'm going to leave it as it is for now, um, but it's definitely something that I'm going to be coming back to. Now, moving on to the heritage line, you'll have seen a lot of these uh, in my other videos. We've got uh, a whistle board in place here and we've got a semaphore signal um, just fitted in place for the moment. That's a DAPOL semaphore signal. That's not wired in yet. Uh, it's not even been tested at all. So um, I'm, I'm not gonna um, kind of integrate that into the landscape until I've had a chance to do that. In terms of signaling, I think there's going to be some compromises made on the layout uh, just in terms of cost. 
Um, I think in reality, this would probably be, um, would have two signal heads um, and, and used to, to, to basically to denote which of the two lines um, the driver would be taking. Um, Cost-wise, it's, it's a little bit expensive to be putting uh, those in place. Um, and, and in terms of the railway, this is effectively a, a preserved railway in the mid-1970s, kind of really at the beginning of, of kind of preserved railways. And therefore, um, if they're running trains, uh, my, my thinking is that as long as the signalling um, is, is safe and, and the railway is safe to operate, um, then there might be some concessions in terms of how that's actually signaled. But not being around at the time, I, I don't know that. Um, as I say, it's more a kind of compromise on cost than anything else to do this. Um, I've got two signals in place on the heritage line, as you'll see. I've got um, two more to go on this side of the board um, and then more over on the other side um, around the station area. Um, but I will come back and I'll talk about those in a future video once I've had a chance to get them um, all wired in. So you probably noticed that the retaining wall um, is growing, uh, doing that section by section. Uh, I've got a couple more that are kind of half painted that need to go in there. Um, that's just gonna be a, a case of kind of keeping going uh, with those as we work along. Um, I've got some plans for what that uh, wall is going to do a little bit um, further along. So I'll come on to talk about those in a second. You will see that a signal box has appeared, and this is a ratio plastic kit. Uh, I've been working on it since about December off and on, but I've never kind of really sat down and focused and got, got it all finished, but finally I've done that. Um, and that means I'm able to put it uh, in place where it's going to go. Uh, it's got a good view there of the station um, and all of the kind of the points and signals uh, that the signals would have to control. So uh, that feels like that's a good place for it to be. Uh, I've left the lid uh, removable. Um, that means that I can come back at a later point and add a leaper frame and some lights in there, but I'm going to leave that as it is um, for the moment. Next job I really need to do is get some point rotting um, onto the heritage line and just to kind of finish this, this area off, uh, meaning that I can then kind of finish up all of the kind of the groundwork and other things like that. Um, my understanding is that the signal box would actually have some kind of opening in the front here for all of that rotting to go inside then up uh, to the frame. Um, but that's not modeled on this kit um, and I'm, I'm not sure why that is. So if anyone knows um, why that's the case um, or if I shouldn't be putting some kind of uh, small box structure down the bottom here uh, to run the rodding into, then please do let me know uh, because as far as I'm concerned, I'm, I, I should really put something like that on it uh, to indicate uh, the rods going and so the rods and the cables going inside. So yeah, I can really get started now on getting all of those in place and, and then kind of get the, the last few little bits of, of missing ballast sorted out um, and then kind of really uh, bring the standard on, on the groundwork in this area up. Um, at the same time, we've got to have our retaining wall continuing along the back. There's also just about enough room behind for a path, which is effectively our path um, that uh, our workers would take as they kind of, uh, from the foot crossings, as they kind of walked um, down, uh, they'd be rotting in front here, so they probably won't walk along here, so along the back um, and down. So one of the things I've been thinking about is what to do with the retaining wall um, as it gets into this area. Now I'm very conscious at the moment there is no road connection um, to this kind of part of the, of the layout. We've obviously got a um, signal box and an engine shed and a station platform, um, but no kind of road access at all. Um, now, what I was thinking about um, was in the background here was adding um, effectively a road tunnel through here um, just to give the idea that there is uh, a way for people to get here um, by car, even though there isn't much space once they kind of get down here. Maybe you could just about turn a car in and, and drive up to the signal box. Um, I'm going to model that on... I'm going to model that uh, on some tunnels underneath the railway near Reading. So let's cut to some pictures and footage of that just to show you what I what kind of thing I have in mind. So here we are on Google Maps. Uh, this is Reading Station. Uh, this is the, the Western Main Line coming out of here. Uh, the triangle and the line off to Newbury and Basingstoke. Uh, then on the west hand side of the triangle, um, you will see Portman Road, and this is an industrial estate in here next to the railway. You'll also notice that there are some 
uh, roads heading underneath the railway line here. Um, and these are very interesting uh, tunnels um, because they have no lighting, they often flood, they're very dark and dingy, uh, and they're perfect uh, for, for the layout. Um, but let's jump to a video from the location itself. So this is the look I'm going to try and capture on the layout, and hopefully I'll have more detail about that on the next update. So just along from the proposed tunnel, uh, the retaining walls are going to continue. Uh, but to add a bit of interest in this area, um, a while ago I picked up a very old uh, secondhand uh, kit of some um, arches uh, with, uh, I, I guess, kind of storage lockers underneath them. Uh, so underneath the arches. Um, and these are them. So. Uh, I haven't finished making them yet uh, and I can't install them until the walls kind of got round to this point so I know where they're going to fit. But the idea is to kind of put them in here with the idea being that these are kind of um, some storage uh, for uh, the loco shed and have now been kind of taken over by the, the Heritage Railway as their stores. Um, so I was, I was thinking about what to put on the doors to these units um, and I think maybe the... Um, LVHR, maybe something like that, the, the Lambourne Valley Heritage Railway, or um, something like that, uh, would be quite a cool, uh, a cool name to make up for this preserved railway. Um, so uh, there are four of these in the pack. Um, so we'll get a good run, I think, um, along here um, of them. Obviously, we'll make them uh, each look a little bit different. Um, so we'll see how that goes uh, when the wall makes it round. And in the background there, you can see the loco shed that still hasn't been finished. Um, I have started to put some mortar wash onto that. That's going to be my next task. And then obviously getting the roof and stuff on there. Um, so that's kind of a little side project that I might um, keep working on. Um, otherwise, not much has changed in this particular area. Um, we've obviously got um, a signal in here. Um, but right next to the shed is the platform of Speen Station, which you'll see me making in a previous video. Uh, if you haven't, I'll link to that in the top right hand corner. And then Speen Station here is looking uh, very lonely and desolate. I have been making some progress on this in the background, but I'll do a, a separate short video just to get you up to date with uh, what I've been working on there. So that will be coming soon. So when I did some tidying up of the layout to film the recent uh, running session, uh, a few things got uh, dumped down this end, um, including the <laughs> famous Quality Street tin. Um, so just to give you a kind of a recap on this area, now we've got this uh, bridge in place. That's a good kind of keystone feature. The next one I want to work on is then uh, what the viaduct is going to be that takes the track, uh, which is currently, I moved some stuff out of the way, um, kind of buried underneath these boxes of, of track. Uh, I did buy, made, like a, a, a year or so ago, the Pico viaduct kit. So I need to get that made up and I need to put that in place and see how that's going to look. I think between that and then this bridge, that will give me a much better sense of the landscape through here. The idea is to have a river that runs through and underneath that viaduct and kind of off into the into the background, um, giving us some kind of um, embankments here and then hopefully a chance to have some river scenes and some kind of cool stuff down there. Um, but what that looks like, I'm not sure. As I say, the next thing I've got to do really is get that viaduct in place. That would also effectively enable me to um, lay track because this is the other side of the southern main line on here. That's going to run all the way around the back through the station um, and over to where we started this video. So, um, so yeah, some, some work to do here. Uh, I don't know where I'm going to store this stuff when I start working on it, but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Um, and then um, in terms of, uh, obviously, I need to finish the retaining wall up to pass the loco shed uh, just on the right here. Um, and then when I've done that, I'll be able to then kind of blend that landscape in a little bit um, and then kind of work on on the end of this line here. Um, yeah, so still lots of work to do. Uh, not a huge priority um, compared to the track laying. And talking of track laying, let me show you where I've got up to so far. Um, so you're going to probably seen uh, these four lines on this kind of quarter of the curve. Um, 
previously. Uh, they're all now glued in place with super elevation. Uh, you might be able to see that the Voyager is just kind of leaning over there um, because it's on that. It, and to, to me, it looks really, really cool when, when things come around these curves. Um, track laying at the moment, um, I'm focusing on these two outer lines. Um, now, because these two lines have some points coming up around um, over in this side over here, um, I'm going to need to, to also lay that line at this, um, the same time. So I just really need to crack on and get that done. Um, it's quite a slow process, as you'll see when I film the uh, track laying um, video, because of the way I kind of work in small sections with the super elevation. Uh, that'll become a bit more obvious when I uh, get around to that point. But let me move the camera and take you a little bit further around so you can see um, what the plan is over the back here. And this is the other side of the bridge. Uh, you'll have seen me building that uh, in a previous video. Um, if not, link up in the top right hand corner. And if I just move the camera, you'll be able to see as these lines um, sweep around. And then over the back here, you can see at the back of the shot, you can see where the southern lines will come in. Um, and then there are a few um, paper templates that are down just to give a sense of what the uh, point work is going to be like in the area. Um, I'll talk you very briefly through that for now. Um, so the idea is that uh, you're going to be able to get from every line to every other line on the layout, um, hopefully in a, in a relatively realistic manner. Um, so this is uh, where the uh, one of the southern lines comes across into this double slip, uh, meaning we've got uh, access between these two lines at this end of the station. Um, and then that will then come uh, a connection onto the Western lines. Um, there'll also be then a connection between uh, the fast line and the slow line um, here um, in kind of both directions. Uh, and this at points will take you off into um, some sidings at the station uh, where things like a station pilot can be, can be sat and things like that. That's as far as I've got with the track laying on this side. As I said, I need to get that second um, line laid around there, these points uh, in place, um, and then that line can continue down there then um, with almost like a mirror image of the point work down at the other end of the station. Um, but let's go down there and take a look. And down here, we've, as I said, we've got uh, effectively a mirror image of, of what we had at the other end. Um, this I have not got as far because this piece of track here has not been uh, put in place. Uh, the end of the kind of the track lane kind of finishes there. You'll be able to see at the back how far the uh, southern main lines have got. They obviously need to come up and round that corner um, up that gradient um, and into the station area here. Um, so you won't get a sense of what the station is going to be like yet. Um, hopefully on the next layout update, um, you'll be able to kind of get a better sense of what that looks like. So that's where I've got to on this side of the layout with track, lay, uh, with track laying. Um, let me just give you a quick uh, overview now of the uh, station on the heritage line that's going to be over this side. So this is where the heritage line station or the main heritage line station is going to be, a platform on either side. Um, you can see some spare bits uh, from making speed station that I've just put in place here. I'm probably going to stick with this width platform on this side, uh, except for the bit with the station building, which I'm going to go a little bit wider on, I, I expect, up to the edge of the board. Um, in the future, I might create some kind of scenics, uh, some lift-out boards to go in here, so when I'm not operating from the middle, um, that's then a scenic area. So I just need to think about how that works. Uh, in terms of uh, station buildings for the heritage line, um, I did very briefly talk about this on my Lambourne video. Um, my thinking is that there will be a kind of a station building here for this side um, with access out onto what will effectively be a road here. Um, and then obviously then the main station over the back there. So this will kind of be a, an area in between the two stations. Uh, so this will be at least this bit uh, here will be a kind of platform area. Um, and then we just need to think about then how uh, the building is designed such that then that gives access up onto that uh, raised level there. Um, so that's kind of something to think about. What I can't get my head around at the moment is, um, so, so I like to use um, a copy of Lambourne Station on one side of uh, these lines 
my current thinking is to put that actually here and not to do access onto this bit here. And I'll talk about where the access would be. Um, the idea being that then you would see most of the front of the station, which is the, well, the kind of the nicer bit of it. Um, if it if if that were over this side instead, you'd then be looking at the back of it, which isn't great. So what I was thinking about doing was having almost the main entrance to the Heritage Line Station on this side. I would then take my um, model of Lambourne and kind of create more of a grand entrance to that um, on the side facing away from the lines uh, and the side that then faces the front of the, the layout, which is over over that way over to the right. Um, I think that will kind of give the best visual look for it. Um, in reality, would that be the way that they do it? I'm not sure. They may well have the main entrance kind of facing onto the road this side. Um, so it's, that's going to be a little bit of a compromise, I think. At the moment, though, I'm leaning towards having the station looking better from the front of the layout as you're viewing it. Um, as you can see, uh, there's a bit of um, MDF in here at the height the platform is going to be at. So you can see there is a kind of a gap between the top of the platform and then the kind of the, the race surface up here. So I'm thinking about doing some steps and maybe doing more of a kind of a, an entrance into the station onto the platform from the road here. Um, so we'll see how that kind of uh, works out. Uh, I, I'm, I'm actually quite interested to um, start building these platforms given that I've got all the templates from when I made Speen. Uh, so that would be quite a simple project just to, to kind of uh, run out on the laser cutter um, with a few amendments made from some of the comments that you guys left um, when I was assembling that. So um, I'm trying not to get distracted by other projects, but that is certainly a possibility for a distraction. I'm also going to need a signal box somewhere around here, um, either at this end uh, or at the other end, uh, or maybe one at either end. Um, I'm thinking about maybe something on the platform, on the end of the platform. Uh, again, I'm not sure. Um, it kind of feels like there's not much, a great deal of visibility from one end of the station to the other. So um, I'm not sure whether I need to go with two signal boxes here, although they would then in theory only be, each box would only be controlling one set of points um, and uh, one, two signals, um, which feels not really enough. It feels like a, a box would probably both sets of points and, and kind of the four signals in this area so um we'll just see how that goes um i think uh, i think just something with a good vantage point um so the signals have got good good visibility would be kind of what um what, what will they do here uh, if you've got any thoughts please do let me know uh, i'll be interested to hear them so if you've been watching uh the previous videos on the channel you'll um have seen me landscaping this area um not made any progress with the, the kind of the mini scrapyard and the kind of the, the, the kind of the railway stores um, or any of the track laying in this area. So that's I, I really do just need to get those uh, lines laid, as I say, particularly those outside too. But as you kind of come round here, you'll be able to see that um, I have done some track laying. Uh, you can see that this is where both lines are, um, are laid, and that then runs all the way round. Uh, the front here. And you'll see that uh, these points are giving access between the fast line and the slow line or the um, fast and the relief lines. Uh, then this point here then allows you access across the running lines to access the slow line on the other side. Um, so that's kind of a, a, a way that if you want to kind of get a loco from one side of the layout to the other, uh, you can do. Um, and then down here, um, access again from fast onto slow lines um, and access into what was going to be a TMD, might still be a TMD, but might equally be um, some si uh, a military, an MOG siding, or it might be um, something along the lines of early power station. Uh, I haven't really decided on, on any of that yet. Um, and that's a long way in the future. So I don't need to worry too much about that. Um, points here you can see is how you get back from the slow line onto the fast um, line. Um, so there's some good operational uh, uh, kind of interest here in terms of being able to flip trains from uh, across different lines and things. Um, and then it's actually quite a cool view looking down here from uh, the top line onto the um, 
Heritage Line um, and onto Speen Station down there. Right, so as in other layout updates, I will do a 360 spin round so you can see all the progress uh, that's been made in various areas. Uh, you'll see that there is still a gap in the back scene there that I need to um, fill in. Uh, these boards have been off quite a lot um, to give me access around there. So as we come around, uh, you can see the main lines um, still needing to be laid. Um, we've got uh, heritage lines not in too bad a state. Obviously, a lot of detail still needed on there. Um, and then the main lines coming around here, our area here still um, open faced baseboards uh, for our TMD or whatever it's going to be in there. Um, bridge that you'll have seen me uh, building previously and our um, our lines, this, obviously the area where the four lines are actually laid is around this corner. So that needs to continue. This area here is going to need um, some landscaping. I'm thinking about the road that's going to run effectively between our two stations um, is going to kind of come down and, and under and into a tunnel underneath the lines um, over here. So uh, that's something that we'll need thinking about. Uh, this back corner over here, I've got no idea at all about what to do there. Um, I'm very conscious that I need some southern railway power infrastructure somewhere. Um, so there's definitely some places we need to think about where that might go. Uh, we're then going to have the southern platforms over the back there and the platforms um, for the western lines uh, in front of them. This is going to be some kind of mashup between kind of Reading and uh, Basingstoke stations. Uh, exactly what that looks like, I'm not quite sure yet. Um, and then that's back goes back around uh, to the stop. As you can see, I've made some progress, but there's still plenty more to do. Um, my real priority at the moment is to get the rest of those tracks laid uh, so I can get trains running on them um, and get all that tested and make sure uh, that's all working well before I go too much further with any of the scenics. Um, but as you'd have seen, there are a few kind of little projects that I might kind of get distracted by, uh, particularly things like the new uh, by the station area over on the far side, the viaduct, um, getting the loco shed finished on the heritage line. All of these things I'm sure will kind of um, kind of distract me at some point. Um, but yeah, my, my primary focus is really on those uh, running lines. I hope you've enjoyed this video and it's given you a good sense of the progress that I've been making on the layout. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, in a second, there's going to be links to other videos from the channel if you're interested and there's going to be a subscribe button right down there. Uh, if you're not already subscribed, then please do consider doing that. Uh, it really helps um, support the channel. But I will see you all on the next video. Bye for now.